grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear friends in Christ, it is my joy and privilege to welcome you to worship as we continue our Easter celebrations this day. I also wish those of you who are celebrating a wonderful and blessed Mother's Day. We join in celebrating the gift of motherly care that is shared with this world. Now let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For Christ lives and reigns with you and with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our gathering hymn is number 361, The Day of Resurrection. Let us sing together. Day. This morning's reading is from John 14, 1 to 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and, in fact, will do greater work than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified into the Son. If, in my name, you ask me for anything, 
I will do it. Here ends the reading. It's been my experience that if you ask for directions in a small town, you generally get one of two different kind of responses. The first is a sort of cryptic laundry list of directives. Keep going down this road a while until you pass by Bob and Michelle's old place. And once you see the stump from the walnut tree that blew over last fall, turn left. It's right next to the place where Wally used to park his backhoe on the weekends. And you'll know that you went too far if you get to the old mill. You know, the one that's been shuttered for the past 40 or so odd years. Sound familiar? In some ways, these instructions remind me of the poor of disciples and especially of Philip, who was clearly bewildered when Jesus started to talk about a place. A house with many rooms that simply wasn't ringing any bells for him. Where is this place? How do we get there again? Are you sure that you're not mixing up the instructions? But the second kind of response that I've encountered when asking for directions in a small town, perhaps you've experienced this as well, goes really quite differently. Sure, I know the place you're talking about. It's not far, but you know what? Why don't you follow me? I don't want you to get lost. And I've driven by that place a hundred times. Come with me. I'll take you there. Notice the difference. In the first instance, we would have been left to our own mixed up sense of direction. But in the second, we are given a companion for the journey, a guide to lead us. In the first, we would have had to figure out the twists and the turns on our own. While in the second, we are gifted with someone who knows the road where the potholes are hidden in the places where the shoulder is known to wash out in the rain. In the first, we are told, but in the second, we are shown. And that's a big difference. I recall one time while vacationing in and around Huntsville, Ontario, Holly and I went back to the same poor farmer five times asking for direction, trying to find our way to a cottage that we had rented. The poor guy finally took pity on us, eventually hopped in his truck, drove slowly as not to lose these out-of-towners, and led us to a place that we had spent the better part of an hour and a half searching for. To this day, I still don't think that we would have found it by ourselves. But that's the crux of the issue, isn't it? The fact that we can't do it on our own, not even close. The good news, and it is good news, is that we don't have to. In fact, God was so determined that God made us a promise in the form of God's Son, who came so that we might know the fullness of a relationship with God. The words we hear this morning, words of hope and promise, are a steadfast reminder that because of Christ, our hearts no longer have reason to be troubled. For all those things that have filled our day with worry and all those things that have weighed us down with fear, have been conquered through our life-giving Savior, who died on the cross and who was buried in the tomb and who rose from the grave on the third day. Fear, in a very visceral sense, is nothing more than a perceived absence of God. And yet God's guiding promises reach back beyond that first sunrise and extend far past the last light of day. God's promises are boundless and limitless and timeless and exponentially more than we ever could have imagined. God's words to us this morning, words of assurance and pardon, are not narrowed by human breath. They are not fixed upon earthly matters. They do not expire with the grave. God's promises ease our troubled hearts by making a way of peace, unveiling the truth of a tomorrow and sustaining us with the assurance of life and life abundantly. Not because we've earned it. Not because we have worked hard enough for it. But because God's promise to love us, to make room for us, to know and to be known by us and to accompany us through our life's journey, that promise never ends. Jesus says to us this morning, do not let your hearts be troubled. And I hope 
that living in the light of Christ's glorious resurrection, we will hear these reassuring words with fresh ears, not as a challenge that we ourselves are unable to meet, but rather as God's promise that has already been fulfilled in Christ. Christ, who is our way, and who is our truth, and who is most certainly our life. May that Christ be our guide. Thanks be to God. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join God's people of all times and in all places in praying for the church, for the world, and for all who are in need. Let us pray. Build us up, Mother in God, as living stones united in your spiritual house. Continually strengthen your church as it is sent forth to proclaim your love. Lord, in your mercy, humble us. Creator God, as part of your creation, fill us with respect and awe for the world that you have made, including volcanoes, ocean currents, tropical rainstorms, glaciers, and other forces that both destroy and create. Lord, in your mercy, align our ways to your love, O God. We pray for countries and leaders and other organizations as they prepare places for those who are seeking refuge and safety. Lord, in your mercy. God of healing and rest, help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles. Comfort their suffering, ease their distress, and carry their burdens. We pray this morning for all those whose names are on our prayer lists and whose needs are known only to you. Lord, in your mercy. Nurturing God, we pray for those who tend and teach young children for the safe pregnancies of expectant parents, and for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care, and we remember all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy. Sustaining God, we pray for our bishops, Michael and Susan, for Pastor Kimber, our dean, for the joy that we experience in our shared ministry. Lord, in your mercy. Generous God, you call into your brilliant light all those who have died. Give us faith to take hold of the promise of your eternal life. And this Sunday, we especially remember Dale Mackey, and we carry his family in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care, asking all of this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
And gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I am delighted to welcome Michelle Temple to our worship leadership this morning, and she will be sharing a piece entitled, Be Strong in the Lord. Before we conclude our worship this morning, I wanted to spend a little time sharing some announcements and reminders with you. First, for our wonderful children and our children at heart, 
On the website, you will find a link to a family Sunday school program from Spark House, as well as a printable resource from Illustrated Children's Ministry. Both of these resources are available to you free of charge, and I enthusiastically commend them to you. They are absolutely wonderful. Likewise, I want to tell you that your councils have been in communication this week about next steps. I am absolutely delighted to share on their behalf that Reverend Judy Phillips has agreed to serve as your interim minister on a part-time basis. I met Reverend Phillips a few months ago and I instantly grew to cherish her friendship. She is enthusiastic and faithful and best of all, she is from Newfoundland. She will be an absolute gift to you in these days. Please continue to pray for Reverend Phillips and for your counsel as they enter into this time of transition. Lastly, I would be remiss if I didn't extend once again my sincerest thanks to each of you. Your calls and emails and text messages, waves, smiles, cookies, cheesecake, and prayers mean more to Holly, Nate, and I than you will ever know. When I shared the news of our new call last week, I was ready for sadness and I was ready for anger. But you have shown me love. And for this, I give overflowing thanks to God. You are in my thoughts. I carry you in my prayers and I give thanks for your friendship and support. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen.